I'm delighted to be joined this morning with Mr. John Maguire, the Executive Head of the British School of Bahrain. John, how have you been? Very well. All well here at the school and uh, yeah, very well. How are you, Charlie? Very good. Good to uh, be connected with you again and having another one of our conversations, this time focusing on education leadership. So to begin with, how would you describe the role of an education leader? Good question. I think uh, for me, leading this school, it's about bringing the best out in everybody. So that could be the best out in the staff, could be the best out in the students, providing opportunities, providing um, uh, a, the ability for everyone to thrive, but also providing that culture that they can pursue their own path. So it's not really, for educational leadership, I'd say it's not really necessarily anything particular do it's much more of a establishing a culture establishing an ethos uh, and then everyone can then function within that ethos i'd say that's probably the most important you make it sound very easy is yeah. it that easy <laughs> no 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 um, yeah and i'm probably glossing over many a uh, many a month of uh, things and i well i, I think it's also about educational leaves it is about no, it doesn't necessarily making it easy for the students or easy for the staff i think one of the things that's always the most um, critical of any school is uh, apathy. If you have a sense of apathy, you're never going to thrive uh, in any school. And so actually as an educational leader, it's actually being there to challenge the status quo, to push people, uh, to create the opportunities. Uh, but sometimes that change, um, both for the students and for the staff and for the parents, uh, can be challenging, but it's it's creating that uh, those opportunities only by pushing people to be better will they actually then thrive for the long way. And I think so. In the short term, having those challenges, having those tough conversations about this is what well, where should we going? This is how should we developing? Uh, it, it can be, but in the long term, you look back and you suddenly realise that actually the school's in a much better place. What, in your opinion, is the key to providing enriching learning experiences to the students? I think, actually, if I wind it back, it all starts with your culture. Uh, there's, the students have got to be happy uh, and the students have got to feel safe. Uh, no matter how many opportunities you provide, they won't actually take those opportunities unless they feel safe to do so. So fundamental for everything that we do here is making sure that the students are really, really happy. Uh, and if they're happy and the parents are happy and they feel safe, then they'll take that risk because for a lot of children it is a risk to uh, put what, what we might as adults look back and say oh if only you'd uh, explored that option or if you know this uh, so here uh, we offer 250 different uh, enrichment activities all free of charge after school activities they range from uh, well you name it we probably offer it uh, they range from Japanese art to learning new languages to sporting, elite sport, to music, music clubs. But um, it's actually then once you're establishing all of those uh, uh, opportunities, it's very easy. Because um, as long as you've got passionate staff, as long as you've got really talented staff, which we do, then they'll, they'll have passions which they're willing to offer. But it's actually it's about encouraging the students to take those opportunities and um, once they've taken those opportunities to stick with them and that's the that's the hardest part um and i think that all comes back to them feeling happy them feeling safe uh where we've also developed recently is in student-led opportunities you know giving them the opportunities to lead giving them the opportunities to drive things forward and that can be from huge international conferences britman uh, which is the British uh, school MUN, was entirely student run uh, and uh, right down to the financing and, uh, and every aspect of it to much more local but really important events such as Girl Up where they're promoting uh, uh, problems and challenges facing uh, women in society at the moment which are really important. Uh, yeah. What are some of the innovations at the British school that promotes quality education? Wow, where do we start? Um, I think we were we were renowned during the pandemic of being incredibly innovative. We were the first school to go entirely live teaching and really led the way within the country of what uh, education should look like during the pandemic. And I think for me, 
What has been most pleasing is that uh, since then we've kept that going. We've kept that sense of innovation, kept that sense of development. I would also say what's also pleasing for me is it's in a broad range of areas. Um, I know uh, Golf Insider kindly gave us uh, an award for innovation in education. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it is always uh, there, I should add. It's not just for your visit. But um, the, uh, the, uh, I think it, where it comes, academia, university guidance, um, stretching students uh, in academics, but also sustainability. Uh, we've got a you know, really ambitious and exciting and innovative um, sustainability roadmap. Um, we've got student wellbeing, which I presented at the COVID conference on, which is, we won an award for, a, a, an ISA award for recently. So all of that is perhaps um, uh, important to us. I could go on, we, this could be the entire in interview about our innovations. And I think that's, uh, but it's, it's, it comes back to that culture of actually, I, I don't, what I, with all of the staff and the students, I don't mind if things don't work. I just mind if they're not trying new things. So some of our things have worked, some of them haven't. And we've said, actually, we need to do that differently. Uh, and I think we're going to get on to technology. That's probably the new area of uh, huge development. Yeah. That, that was uh, going to be my next question. But something I'd like to ask, actually, talking about culture, I understand uh, the British school now, it's very much a, gro it's a very exciting, but also a very much growing school. Um, is it a challenge to maintain that culture whilst going through this growth? Uh, no, I think it's about getting uh, the right people on board. I mean, the right staff. We've had the lowest uh, turnover of staff in our history this year. Uh, and actually attracted those that did leave were going off for uh, really good reasons, moving for promotion, moving for retirement, moving for adventure. So that was a really positive part of that. Um, and, we had an, and we've had an incredibly strong field um, for all of our positions we've advertised. So definitely the British school's name is out there and attracting good people. And once you do get a name for attracting innovative people that are really developing, and actually everyone we interviewed said, really liked your ethos, really liked the school's culture of caring, but also really liked your ambitious and, uh, and nature and how much you were looking to improve, felt that actually this would be a school that I could grow in. That, uh, that. And I think that's also being reflected in our parents as well. They, um, there's no resistance to change. They're very positive. They really promote the school and the local community. And they actually, uh, all of the, the comments they are, are always about how they would like to see it improve further. And that's a great position for us to be in uh, as a school. There's very little criticism. They're just like, actually, we would really like this, rather, which is a very different to, I, I really don't like this. And that positive mindset, I think, is very common amongst our parents at the moment, which is great. Something that everyone's talking about at the moment artificial intelligence, AI, um, which seems to be changing the world um, or is going to change the world. How do you see this changing education, certainly within the British School of Bahrain? Yeah, uh, I think, um, well, I came back from the Cobus conference uh, in London, which had 500 schools attending. And at that conference, it was all about AI and the impact it's going to be on every aspect of education. and. How it was described to me is that, you know, the train has already left the station uh, and there's no brakes on the train. No. And if you're not a school that's on that train, you need to catch the next one pretty quick. Thankfully, we're on that first train. Um, I think the, there's two things I would add uh, precursor to perhaps describing what we're doing. The first is whenever it comes to technology and education, um, too many schools look at the technology and think of how that can change their education. And down that route, that's always a problematic. You're much better to look at your school uh, and say, this is the problems we've had. And then there will always be technology to solve that problem. But focus on the, the challenge you've got uh, and there'll be technology to solve it. Otherwise, if you try and focus on the technology and be a technology led, you, it's not going to work. So for us, um, I'll give you an example. So for us, um, we're very much about individual students, uh, personalized learning for students. Uh, how do you do that in a, in a class of you know, 20 students? Um, 
so technology is then solves that. So we're immediately rolling out and we've been trialing it this whole year, something called Inspired AI. Uh, Inspired AI uh, is then a machine um, based learning where the students uh, get a diagnostic assessment. It can be in English, it could be in maths, it can be in Arabic, it could be in science. And, uh, and then based on that diagnostic specific to that child, uh, to that child they will then have a, a series of questions and guidance which will lead them through that learning. So for us, that, that's a great example of how personalized learning, which is our ethos, is being solved by AI. I do would say there is a real caveat with AI. My biggest thing is that people are going to really fear it rather than embrace it. And anything that they get scared of might then, as you say, put the brakes on uh, the thing. So I could easily see people getting scared of things like ChatGBT. Do, do you fear it at all? No, I think it's, it's, it's the, the development, it's the future. It's definitely there. It has a real place in education. Um, it, if you've ever used it, it's very good at drafting things. I think we immediately have seen it that you ask it a very complex question and it's a great to generate as an example. And then the students actually dissect it and saying, no, it's got this wrong, it's got that wrong. It hasn't got enough information about that, which is you know, much, much better because they're really, that, that higher order skill of analysis is much better for them. Um, where I think people will fear it is things like uh, coursework and you might see the death of coursework. And, I, and that would worry me because for some students, coursework is very important. It's very good for them. Uh, it's integral to part of their course. I saw I got had a presentation actually in uh, in Bahrain from a um, a Chinese company that actually in a school had put two um, cameras in every classroom, and using AI it could facially recognise every single student, could identify where they are on the campus. Um, he, he showed uh, the, the, they showed me the screen. It was like something out of Minority Report. You know these screens of the whole school in 3D and every student identified. But where they were then developing it was that every they were going to take a, a baseline of every student's happiness. And if a student arrived at school and the, the uh, AI assessed them for being unhappy, it would then flag it. Uh, now that is an incredibly powerful tool uh, for this. The question you'd have to have about you know, morals and ethics about is that the right thing but you know that ability to be almost proactive rather than reactive to pastoral care is a, a real challenge facing all schools uh, and if AI can then support that that could be a, a good example. Um, yeah. Very interesting. Can you describe a recent single specific student success story uh, within the British school? Yes, lots. Uh, it can be a topic. I can probably give you a, a one. Uh, we'll go with one. Well, I'll give you one per topic. Okay. Um, music, uh, you know, absolutely fantastic year for music. Mm -hmm. uh, achieved best in Bahrain at the um, British Schools of the Middle East competition. Yes. But then actually uh -huh. went on to have a huge success at the Global Cobus competition. Mm -hmm. And actually one of our students won that outright. Uh, which is a, a great position to be in and lots of commendations from that. Congrats. Sport, um, we've had lots of individual and team successes and won a lot of the Bahrain leagues in basketball and football. We've had individual successes in golf and actually one of our students has just secured a scholarship to go back to uh, a prestigious school in the UK on a full golf scholarship. So wow. um, we've had three Crown Prince scholarships this year, which is really good for the school. Mm -hmm. uh, one going off to uh, America on fully funded scholarship, two going off to the UK. Great. And that's a great position to be in. We've had students get into Oxbridge. We've had lots of students get in for medicine uh -huh. and engineering. So, yeah, a huge number of uh, individual successes this year. It's been a good year. That, that's within the space of a, of a year? That's in the space of this year. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Congrats. Yeah, it's a good, good year. A good yeah. year. Yeah. What was the best thing that happened to you when you were a student? Oh, great answers. Can I remember that far back? Oh, what, what, what was the best thing that happened to me? I think the best thing that happened to me is always that, uh, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty, and uh, what do they say, that uh, youth is wasted on the young. 
I do think, you know, I did squander some of my youth, but <laughs> some of the best things that did happen to me, I think any time I actually took an opportunity mm. and I learned a huge amount from it, whether that was a leadership opportunity at university or at school or whether it's an opportunity. So I think the one thing I would say that I, the best part of my youth was saying yes to opportunities there. Uh, I never regretted them. I've used them. I've learned so much uh, in my career, in my personal life. Taking those opportunities um, is probably the best thing that I had. I agree with you totally. That would be the thing I would recommend mm. people. You know, always say yes. Yeah. Always volunteer. It, you know, sometimes it's rubbish, but actually yeah. you, even the worst event or a worst thing you volunteered for, you still take something away from it. Yeah. yeah.